So today we're working on a 2010 Subaru Impreza. Specifically, the check engine light is on and we have a problem with the variable valve timing system. And very quickly, the way that that system works is it uses engine oil pressure to activate the cams in the variable valve timing system. And if you have dirty engine oil, very often the system will not run right. You'll get the check engine light on and just changing the oil will correct and rectify the problems most of the times. So what we're doing today is we're changing the oil. We're going fully synthetic, which is what I recommend. Go fully synthetic. Specifically, I like to use Pennzoil's Platinum Fully Synthetic Motor Oil. A couple of reasons behind that. Number one is that the base oil is derived from natural gas as opposed to crude oil. And because of that, you have less impurities, which makes the motor oil cleaner. And that's exactly what you want. You want the cleanest oil you can get. Number two is the cleansing power is terrific. Now, lab tests have shown regarding cleaning the pistons of the motor, Pennzoil Platinum does an 8% better job than Mobile One and 17% better job than Valvoline SimPower. So uh, that's just terrific. That's exactly what you want motor oil to do. Just give you very, very clean, terrific cleansing properties. And lastly, the reason why I like uh, this motor oil living in the northeastern United States in the cold winter months you want something that flows very very well uh, especially during cold startups and this flows excellently down to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit for the, so for those reasons that's why I like the Pennzoil fully synthetic platinum product now what I'll also do is I'll include an icon throughout the video if you want to click on it it'll go directly to Pennzoil site you can, they have some really cool videos. They also have all the stats on it if you're curious. So this is what I like to use, and that's what we'll be doing today. And all we'll change on the Subaru, get the car running good again, and we'll be in good shape. Now, of course, you don't want dirty engine oil getting in your eyes, so make sure you wear safety glasses, of course, disposable gloves. If you get any oil on your skin, just wash it off with warm water and soap. This is a bag that we'll use to discard the old oil filter in. Of course, coming down here, make sure you use a floor jack. We have our jack stands. Also, regarding the drain pan, this is a really nice feature. If you can find one of these drain pans with the spout, that way when you discard the old oil and you clean out the, uh, the pan here, having a spout makes everything so much cleaner as opposed to all the oil dripping here and getting on the floor. Try to get one of these drain pans. It's a real nice plus. Now if the engine is cold, what you want to do is just start up the car just for a few minutes just to warm up the motor. That way when we remove the drain bolt, the oil will flow that much better. Don't make, you don't want it hot, you just want it a little bit warm. So now what we need to do is find the oil pan. That's where the drain bolt is located. And that's where it is on this vehicle. Again, we warmed up the car. I can feel that the uh, oil pan is warm. You don't want to do this when the car is hot. You'll burn your fingers. So just make sure the car is warm. And again, you don't want to hurt yourself when you do this. And get yourself a long wrench. The longer, the better. Place it over the end of the drain pan. Now, a couple things. If you have a tough time removing this bolt, you know, especially some of these uh, clowns that these fast oil place... Uh, repair centers, they'll use impact wrenches to install this bolt. That's the last thing you want to do. But if it's too tight, you can use a three pound hammer, tap the end of it. You can even get a large socket to fit over the end, put an extension over that socket and give yourself a lot more leverage. So I think we should be okay here. So just loosen up. There we go. Again, this is a long wrench. The longer the better. We'll place that there. And here we go. Now as the oil drains, I just want to inspect this washer. And this is still okay. Sometimes you need to replace them. But this is still okay. We cleaned up the drain plug. We'll go ahead and reinstall it back on the oil pan. And the next step is getting that oil filter and we'll place it into a plastic bag. We'll go ahead and reinstall the drain plug here. And 
when it comes to tightening these, you don't have to over tighten them. Just give it a good snug. That's it, we're good to go. Now let's replace that oil filter. Now the oil filter in this vehicle lives right there. Now, sometimes these can be really hard to remove by hand. So what you can do is get a tool that fits over the end of the oil filter. We'll attach a small extension with a ratchet and we'll get it out that way. And here we go. And there it is. Makes the job much, much easier. We'll grab the train pan. And here we go. And then we just want to clean off as much oil as possible from the exhaust here. It will burn off once we start the car, but if we can minimize that, that would be great. Then you just want to make sure that the gasket is still on the old oil filter. If it isn't, then go look on the, uh, on the motor mount, but usually they do come off. So now we can go ahead and discard this. I like to place it in a plastic bag and then I usually bring it back with me to the auto recyclers with the used oil. And then we have the new oil filter. Now with this, I did try to get a Pennzoil oil filter. I just couldn't find one for the Subaru. Even online, I just couldn't find it. But for most vehicles, they do have an oil filter. And what you want to do is just take a little bit of oil and spread it on the gasket and that just makes a better seal also it makes the filter a little bit easier to take off next time and now before we reinstall the oil filter as you can see here once the oil filter makes contact with the motor mount you want to turn it three quarters to one turn so again once we hit contact turn it three quarters to one turn and we're in good shape Now we're ready to add oil to the vehicle and by looking at the owner's manual we see that the capacity is 4.2 quarts or 4 liters. And then we'll just check the dipstick here and we're right on the F mark so we're in good shape. And I've discarded the old oil in an empty plastic container so we'll just recycle that and then we'll start up the car, let it run for a couple minutes, check for leaks and we'll be in good shape. 